Welcome, kings and queens, to another episode of Unapologetic, your number one podcast. This is the show where kings and queens tell their legacies and on. So get ready for the gems to drop and pull up to the table because we're ready. Welcome, my people. This is your host, Melly Mel, aka Mr. Unapologetic, right here on your number one podcast. Um, We've been busy, man. We've been working back to back shows uh, of some very talented individuals. And again, um, I ran into another talented brother in the beginning of Unapologetic, and he even got even higher. Man, <laughs> I can honestly say that, man. He has improved more than I gave him credit for. And that's and that's me just being humble and just being real with it. Um, but Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, man. We love the interactions we've been getting. Uh, we've been doubling in size right now. We are also on iHeartRadio. And so, man, the growth has been magnificent. I thank you all for tuning in and following and sharing, man. We love y'all. But to get back to uh, this multi-talented brother, man, He at first, if you guys been following, he was the admin of, of the NAACP in Grand Rapids. Now he's coming back onto the show as a founder of a multitude of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna Multi-fast. let him talk about it. Please welcome Kareem Skills, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, brother? What's good, man? How you feeling, bro? I'm blessed, oh, man. Man, I've been I've been good, man. I can't wait till the heat, you know, finally sticks. You know, living up north. You know. We're in that interesting Michigan season right now, man. You know, <laughs> us lifelong Michigan, there's no stranger to it. But, you know, I'm re- I'm with you, man. I'm ready for a full, full summer mode. Yeah, bro. It's, we we I feel like we just des- we earned that and we deserve, it, especially with a crazy year that we've been had that we had and is still having, should I say. Uh um, yeah, for sure, man. Thank you for having me back on the show, man. Uh you know, uh, and it's been it hasn't been that long since we came on last, but in that period of time, um, a lot has changed for the better. Lots of new opportunities. I wanted to, so as as I'm transitioning in different spaces within my life and personal and professional uh, career, I'm like, I gotta touch back, touch back with my guy Mel at the Unapologetic Podcast, and just kind of give some game, man, back to the audience and let them know kind of how things have grown and and the direction where I'm taking things uh, going into wrapping up 23 and going into 24. Mm, man, let's get it started. Man, I can't wait because the last time we talked, man, you you dropped some some great quotes um, during our last conversation. And some, some of it stuck with me, you know, throughout the process of, you know, growing, expanding for myself, um, especially how uh, I respect the way that you always innovating like regardless of where you at, how you're sure. sitting, man, you can have dinner and be thinking of a next biggest plan. And I always admired that about you. And so, you know, I wanted to start with, man, what what happened between the transition between the NAACP and, you know, you just, you know, you're jumping off the porch pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Nutshell. No, man. And I started off with just saying, um, you know, the NAACP, was a great experience for me um was able to grow a lot and help grow the organization and just learn a lot about myself and um during that experience so it, it was no negative split i want to make sure that you know always showing love and respect to the organization i mean you're talking about legacy organization over 110 years in existence doing this work mm-hmm. when you talk about the fight for civil rights um you talk about the black uh, struggle, uh, you know, it, it, you can't have that conversation without mentioning the NAACP. So I'm going to always speak to them in, in the best light. And I'll always be a member and, and a supporter of the organization and and, and still uh, working with the organization in some capacity. But yeah, it was, it was not a bad split, man. It was uh, earlier this year. So just kind of take a few steps back, even before when we met Mel, you know, I've always had my hands in various entrepreneurial endeavors. I started a photography company some years back with my nephew, 
um, Drade Dahl, shout out to him, and, and as well as uh, started my own insurance practice uh, back in 2018. So when I came on board with NAACP, originally it was in a contract capacity and doing some consultant work around um, kind of their their uh, social media footprint, right? So uh, help kind of uh, bring up the website and the social media presence. So helped a lot of w- with marketing. So say all that to say that, you know, that was the plan from, from the beginning was for me to come on board and, and serve in that role. But we were able to grow the organization within such a, a short period of time that the need uh, came where, you know, they needed somebody to come on, on board as staff and serve in the role. Again, started off in the role as administrative operations, and then we just kind of transitioned the title officially into executive director. But in that role, as you know, I manage the day-to-day tasks, um, manage the staff of the, of the organization. That includes, a, you wow. know, if you know anything about a nonprofit with small teams, everybody does a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because you so can't, talking- you gotta, you gotta spread the you know, the workout. So I, 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 I get it. Yeah, man. So everything from fundraising to, um, you know, program development, uh, building new partners, networking, collaborating with other organizations. So I say all that to say that that was a good run for me, but it was, it's always been in my heart. Um, and, and one of my primary goals has always been to create a, a, a business that's sustainable, man, where I can, um, create a way of living for myself and my family that that I can call that I can claim ownership to, right? So that brings us to kind of where we are today. So in January, I stepped away from NAACP to pursue my consulting business full time. So I started Skills Consulting LLC back in 2021, and had already been doing various forms of consulting and contract work even prior to that, working with some other community organizations and have done some stuff with the city of Grand Rapids and several other organizations. So just decided, man, doing some, some thinking last year as, as we were wrapping up the end of the year and, and, and just decided, man, it was time for me to to step back out and, and really pursue that full time. So that's what brought us here today. And just to give you a quick snapshot of, into scales consulting, kind of what we do. Yeah. You said it, man, I'll, you know, yeah. So we, <laughs> We specialize in, in a lot of different, in a, we have several areas that we do a lot of work in, but our specialty is provide innovative and creative solutions for businesses and nonprofits, you know, that are seeking fresh ideas and expert advice, specifically in areas of leadership development and team building. So we do some coaching, working with leaders of all various organizations, both for-profit and nonprofit um, helping them work through a lot of the challenging issues that a lot of companies face today from change management, you know, changes in leadership to staffing and HR related issues with retainment, uh, all, right. all the way down to what public engagement and even infusing some um, diversity and equity principles in there as well. Um, but the the primary um, specialty is is the leadership coaching and team building and just helping teams work more efficiently in this new hmm. day and age, man. So okay. it's been a blessing, bro. I've been rocking it out, man. We, you know, about a, you know, not to not to share too much, but you know, we almost about a half a year in, man, and projections are that we're gonna exceed um, you know, revenue from last year uh, by at least 50%. So it's been Ooh, God, okay. Oh, congratulations, bro. Thank you, fam. Oh, bad. And so was that out of all of that, man, it seemed, was it a surprise that, you know, to you when you finally hit that pinnacle that you was reaching for? No, I wouldn't say it was a surprise, man. I really, I wouldn't. I think things moved so fast. And over the last few years during my time at NAACP, my business was actually growing, right? And right. as I was building that network through the organization and just personally, more opportunities were being presented to me. But Man, one thing about me, man, is I'm a I'm a I'm a diehard worker, man. If I'm on your team, you know, I'm one of them guys that, you know, going we can I'll be the first one there, last one to leave, whatever it takes to get the job done, kind of thing, right? Right. And I found myself, you know, I won't say overextending myself, but as I was really dedicated to the work of the organization that some of my other goals 
had started to kind of not maybe excel at the speed that I would have liked. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it was a surprise, man. I think everything happens in, in the right time, right? Um, right. Just trusting okay. the process, trusting God. And um, I think, you know, it was just a, it was just time uh, as I looked at the opportunities that were in front of me, it, it just made perfect sense to to take that step this year. Hmm. Wow. So, wow, I got so many bu- questions bunching up my head now. <laughs> <laughs> that just opened up a doorway. Man, it's it's like, I, I didn't expect that. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you always had that skill of networking from just from our previous conversations off camera, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, dang. So that's, you know, that actually helped me, you know, as a thought change the way I, I communicated on the job. Right. You know what I mean? That, that, that was a big improvement for me uh, all all in a nutshell, because that's, that's what we want to do. You want to improve every day. You want because don't no one person know everything. Not right. even rich. So it's like you got to keep that mindset in where you're, you you don't have a ceiling. Mm. That's how I'm put. You know that's that's the vibe that I get when you know when when you when you describe that about you know the consultant business and how you was actually working multitude of jobs at one time. Right. You know, and I and I totally understand how you said when you. You felt like you overextended your 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 hand. Well, after a while, your hand can only hold but so much weight. One right. hand, right? So right. you were doing it with hands and feet. So I can only, for real. You know, that's for so real. It, but I I respect that you didn't quit. You know, what I'm just put in the simplest terms. Uh, you 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 kind of went even harder. You was like add sure. more weight. Cause you, now that I think about it, man, you, you right. The last time that I can recall, you were building something behind closed doors. We never, you never discussed it. Right. But I didn't, I, I didn't expect all this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So that's just, you know, sometimes, man, I was just telling somebody, I was meeting with a young man the other day as I was uh, speaking to some high school students at a local high school here in Grand Rapids in their business class. And him and I were, he was asking me some questions. And one thing, one piece of advice I gave a man is, is uh, have a plan and have a goal, but don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid and always be willing to take a detour, right? Uh, right. When, when opportunities present. And that's one thing that I think not everybody is quite comfortable with. And, and rightfully so, everybody's got their, um, you know, skills and, and traits that fit them and fit their personality. But that's one thing about me, man, is I've, if, if you know, if spoke, spoken to anybody who's worked with me or uh, at various organizations that I've been a part of is Kareem has the ability and is, is fearless when it comes to having to make a shift. Right. And that's one of the things that, that I help a lot of my clients with is and when they're presented with, you know, in the industry, things are changing quicker than they ever were, man. You know oh, I mean? man. You, you look For at sure. even what in the last couple of years, the whole movement around how uh, restaurants and food businesses now have to really incorporate the DoorDash and, and yeah, the Shopify. delivery service. Yeah, man. It's right. Just, yeah, you ain't lying about that. But, but yeah. so having that ability, man, to be able to, you know, first of all, keep your composure, right? Because I think a lot of times people get in that space where they're presented with an obstacle. And the first thing in their mind is like, to panic and anxiety. So you got to be able to stay level heavy, keep your composure and then figure out what's the best way that we can pivot. Right. And still be able to, you know, keep us on the path to achieve those goals that we set. But sometimes you got to know when to pivot, man, you might have to take a different direction in order to get you to that finish line. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's, that's a huge important principle that a lot of, I try to influence a lot of young people and people who I speak with is like, don't be afraid, man. When those when those obstacles and, and those shifts come, just be willing to pivot and um and you know use it as a learning experience. Mm, that's a good that's a good quote. That's a darn good quote. I was uh I was having a conversation with oh my god I don't remember um 
Mr. The Vice President of Reality Labs, mm. I can remember it, uh, of Meta, Mr. Colin Sewell. Shout okay. out to you, Mr. Colin Meta, over there at the Meta industry. Um, in our meeting, he he actually talked about like changing, you know, as as our people, as we grow, as this generation grows, the reason why we are such great uh, businesses and you know mindsets is because we're able to adapt yes and you know and it you know because we had to there was no other choice so it's we have to learn that skill in order to survive and you stating that that pivot statement man it just brought me back to that and um i want to ask you what how many pivots did have you done so far besides the consultant consulting business that you have because man you've been pivoting all over the court <laughs> like the that triple threat game right that, <laughs> that Carmelo triple threat man no man you know that's a good one man I think I think we all pivoting whether you know it or not um mm -hmm. just about every day in your life you're going to be presented with some type of challenge that's going to require you to pivot you know some are greater than others you know for me you know having that huge career shift um you know after five years of working with an organization and, and helping the organization grow and reach new heights, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bittersweet, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? You, you yeah. create. Yeah.